Welcome back to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at this iPhone 12 that needs a replacement charging port. In this instance, the problem with the phone is that it won't connect to iTunes when plugged into a PC or Mac. It also won't play audio when connected to headphones. Other reasons that you might want to change the charging port are obviously if the phone won't charge or if the bottom microphones aren't working. And as always, if you want to try this job yourself, I recommend watching the video in full before undertaking the job. And finally, for a list of tools and equipment that I use in this video, please check out the description below. As with all iPhone repairs, let's start by removing the two pentalobe screws at the bottom of the device. For this repair, we are going to be removing a lot of screws from the device, so I recommend that you keep them organized by using something like a magnetic mat like this one. The adhesive on the iPhone 12 is very strong, so the phone needs to be heated before we can remove the screen. To get the phone warm enough to remove the screen, I use a heat mat, but you can use a heat gun or hairdryer. My heat mat is set to 70 degrees, and we'll leave it on there for about eight minutes. Now that this phone's hot enough, we can flip it over, turn the device off, and then attaching a suction cup, I'm gonna begin lifting this screen to create a gap. It looks like this one might have already been replaced because this is usually much more difficult to remove. Once you've lifted enough, the phone opens like a book, revealing the inside of the device. We're done with the heat mat now, so we can move that to one side and start disassembling the phone. Take a tri-wing screwdriver and remove the two screws, securing down the shield for the battery and screen flex cables. Then using tweezers, remove the shield. Using a plastic prying tool, you can now disconnect the battery, followed by the two cables for the screen. Moving up to the top of the logic board, there's four screws holding down this shield. Remove those, and again using tweezers, lift the shield out of the way. We can now disconnect this flex in the top left of the motherboard using the plastic spudger. This will now free the screen away from the device to be stored safely for later. For this repair, we will need to remove the logic board, the SIM card reader, Taptic Engine, and loudspeaker at the bottom. So let's get started from the bottom upwards before we can remove the charging port. Starting with the loudspeaker, there's four crosshead screws holding that into place. Remove those four screws and take your tweezers to remove the loudspeaker. Moving on to the vibration motor or taptic engine, remove the two tri-wing screws above it. That will release a shield. There's a crosshead screw underneath it as well as two tri-wing screws holding down another shield. There's two more tri-wing screws holding down the shield above the SIM card reader. Remove those to release the shield at the bottom of the logic board. Then, using your plastic spudger, release the two flex cables. Before going any further, you will need to release the SIM tray and this one standoff screw at the bottom of the SIM card reader. There's one more tri-wing screw at the top left of the SIM card reader, which should now allow us to release that and store it safely for later. We can now disconnect the flex cable for the Taptic engine and unscrew the standoff screws that are holding it down. That's the Taptic engine release now. Make sure that you don't lose this little pin for the SIM tray. There's a little bit of adhesive on the bottom of this shield here. Just be careful when lifting that. Now to release the charging port, we have to lift the barometer sensor and microphone away. Remove the two standoff screws either side of the charging port itself. There's one more standoff screw in the top right of the charge port and another one towards the bottom left of the flex cable. There's always two crosshead screws at the bottom of the charging port. We really are nearly there now. There's two more crosshead screws in the side of the chassis here and another tri-wing on the right side of the chassis. I think the very last one is this one in the bottom left and that should allow us to release the charging port. As I said before we started disassembling the device, we do need to remove the logic board from here. 
So go ahead and release all the flex cables attached to our logic board. It's always a good idea to bend them back slightly as well because it will help when reinstalling it. Just be careful not to fold them because you might damage the cable. I've saved this cable for last because it is stuck down to our logic board fairly sneakily underneath this bit of tape here. So make sure you peel back the tape before you release it. To release the logic board, it's held down by a few screws, one crosshead screw in the bottom left of it, a crosshead screw underneath the camera flexors in the top right. There's another crosshead screw just to the top of the logic board. And finally, a standoff screw in the top left of the board. You should now be able to take the plastic prying tool and lift in from the bottom, lift the board away from the chassis. If you place your plastic stick under the board like this, it saves us having to lift the board entirely out of the device. Carefully reach underneath the cable for the charging port flex and peel it away from underneath the board. We can now add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the charging port flex. This is going to help us loosen the adhesive that's holding it down. Using tweezers to detach the microphones will also help and also, unlike me, don't forget to remove this plastic sort of jig that holds the, micro the microphone on the left in place. This should now allow us to release the charging port flex from the device with a little bit of force. Now that we've got the faulty part removed, we can discard that and get hold of our new replacement charging port. It's very important to use a genuine pull part because otherwise after the repair, you might get a three minute boot loop. Unfortunately, the purple one wasn't available for this model, so I settled for a white one, which will do the same job. Before I install it, I'm gonna remove this leftover bit of adhesive from the previous port, just using a blade. Then carefully peel away all the blue film on the back of the charge port. We may have to make some adjustments to the charge port, so I add a small amount of isopropyl alcohol to the sticky areas of the adhesive before I install it, and that just gives us a little bit of time before it evaporates to move the charge port around. Lining it up can be a little bit fiddly, but I usually aim to get these two holes in place and the charge port first, followed by the logic board and the flex cable secured into the board. The rest of it should follow alignment now, but I always say it's very important to get the flex cable in place first because we don't want to secure this down only to find out that that's a millimeter out of line and won't sit correctly in the logic board. Now we'll just reverse our previous steps. Standoff screw just below that and the other crosshead screw that sits underneath our camera cables. With that secured, I'll reattach all the flex cables in this top area of the phone to make sure that they line up properly as well. Make sure that you leave the battery disconnected until we've finished assembling the whole device, but we can attach this flex cable 
to the bottom of the board. I always find these bits awkward, so I use a plastic spudger just to help me secure it into place. And then of course there's one cross head screw in this bottom left here. Now let's start re-securing our charge port into place and we'll start that off with the small tri-wing screws in the bottom left and the bottom right. The charging port that I've got, because it's a pull, it's already got that plastic alignment jig for the barometer and microphone attached to it. So I'll leave that attached and re-secure the charge port into place with the two standoff screws either side. Now we've got a few screws holding it down. It's important to make sure that this right side microphone is sat in the correct place. There's a couple of teeth on the side of the microphone that will line up with the chassis. Let's get the two crosshead screws in the bottom of the device now. The two screws in the bottom of the device, I probably should have installed those before I put the two standoff screws in because the, the standoffs do get in the way a little bit. But hey, nobody is perfect. Moving on, we can reattach the two crosshead screws to the side of the chassis. The hole that they sit in is slightly out of line, so I just use tweezers to line that back up. And I'll leave it slightly loose, just so I can get my second screw in there which I tighten up before tightening the previous screw up to secure it in place. There's another tri-wing screw which secures to the side of the chassis just down the bottom here. And then I've just realized that this one belongs here because that one's used to hold the loudspeaker in place. To reattach the Taptic engine, we need to first get this standoff screw into place, place the Taptic engine down, and secure the flex cable to our new charging port flex cable. There's another standoff screw at the top left of the Taptic engine, as well as one more on the top right. I've made a slight mistake here, but this shield will slide under the Taptic engine and on top of the microphone and barometer. That's held down in the bottom left by one tri-wing screw as well as another tri-wing screw just here. Before reinstalling the loudspeaker, there's one crosshead screw in the bottom right of the battery. Now we can place down the loudspeaker and secure it into place with the four screws. Now we can go ahead and install the SIM card reader and connect the flex cable to the bottom of the motherboard. Before you install the small shield for the vibration motor cable, there's one standoff screw in the bottom right of the SIM reader, and then the shield can go on top of that. There's a tri-wing screw holding down the bottom of the Taptic engine, another tri-wing screw at the bottom right of the SIM reader, another one in the top left of the SIM reader, and then finally, we can reinstall this small shield that holds those two flexors in place at the bottom of the board. These are held down by two tri-wing screws. Resecure those into place, and then we can reinstall the screen. Before reinstalling the screen, it's important to remove any of the leftover adhesive that's stuck to the chassis. The original adhesive, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is much stronger than this aftermarket adhesive that's on this one. And if you are struggling removing it, I'd recommend using a little bit of heat to help loosen it up. We can now install a new dust and moisture resistant seal. And I always secure them in the left hand corner first. Make sure that they're lined up tight with the right, the left edge, and then the rest of it should follow nicely. Lay it down loose at first and use the flat end of the spudger 
to apply pressure all around the edges, securing our sticker into place. Now take some tweezers and remove that first layer of blue film, but leave the second layer behind until after you've installed the screen. Now we can take our original screen, reattach the ear speaker flex cable to the top of the board, followed by the touch and display flex cables, and finally the battery. Reinstall the little cover for the battery connector and screen flexors and secure that down with the two tri-wing screws. This is the last shield to install now and that's secured down with four more tri-wing screws. And at this point, you should just have two pentalobe screws left over for the bottom of the phone. If you've got more screws left behind, I recommend that you go back a few steps and check where you've missed anything out. We can now lift that last bit of blue film from the seal. and close the screen up just like a book and starting at the top, secure it into the chassis, work your way down, closing up the phone. Reinstall the SIM tray and the two pentalobe screws. And then we can start testing that this phone now works properly. The first test that I do is plugging the device into a lightning cable to check that it will prompt the phone to boot when connected. The next test that I want to do is ensure that the microphones are working. So I'll just open voice notes and record some sound. We can also play that sound to make sure that the loudspeaker is working okay. We need to make sure that the vibration motor is working and the easiest way to do that is just to flick it on and off silent mode and that should make a vibration. Now finally, I'll connect this to iTunes and make sure that it's working all good. We can see that it's identified the phone as soon as it's been plugged in. So that's how to replace the charging port on the iPhone 12. I hope that this video has provided you some value. If it has, make sure that you click the subscribe button. Make sure